All right, welcome to Court of Public Opinion, eight minutes after the four o'clock hour. House Oversight Chairman, Congressman Daryl Issa, good uh, good personal friend as well as a good friend of the show, is with me, San Diego's own Congressman. House Oversight Chairman Daryl Issa is on the uh, front lines, true conservative, doing the dirty work, the Dems and the rhinos fail to do. Uh, He famously referred to President Obama as the most corrupt president in modern times, calls himself the House GOP's chief watchdog. With us this afternoon, uh, Daryl, how are you doing? Rick, I'm doing just fine. It's uh, it's an exciting time to try to fight the the ever-growing bureaucracy and, and, quite frankly, to get the American people to understand how deep the hole is that we've dug under first Republican and now a Democratic president. Uh, but I think the American people are now ahead of the politicians, and that's a good thing. Well, I, I think they are. I think the American people have been ahead of the politicians all along. But save for you and a few others, uh, the, uh, the, the politicians have been stonewalling, basically saying, you can't do this without us. Without us, there's no way that you can get anything done. And you've, you know, the mantra that you've had from day one, you know, when you and I went out and did the uh, oh, the town hall meetings in uh, in San Diego last summer, um, you know, thousands of people showed up. They were they were there for one reason. They saw a vision. They saw your vision. They saw the vision of a better America, some semblance of what it once was uh, before this overreaching socialist administration took took power. And that's what we got to get back to. Well, there's no question, Rick. We've got to get back to it. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been listening to Paul Ryan and, and going over the numbers, and some people are getting depressed, and I'm looking at it as the greatest challenge of a generation since D-Day, or at least since Pearl Harbor. It absolutely, we have an opportunity to change the entitlement mentality in this country so that we can go back to competing successfully against the rest of the world, or to follow the course, you know, led so artfully by France of slow decline. And the American people are not picking slow decline. They're picking, let's give us the truth, let's make the tough but right decisions so that we don't burden the next generation with the excesses of this one. Well, you know, Congressman Issa, you know, let, let me let me tell a tale out of school. I was in Washington. I was doing some business. Um, I called uh, Daryl and said, hey, Daryl, can I come by? He said, Rick, I'm at the airport with my wife and my dog. Um, we're, we're headed out. Uh, you were going to the Middle East, not for a photo op, not because somebody said, hey, it'd be a great story if you went and did that. Uh, but the bottom line was you were going there because you cared. You were going there because it was something important to you. Well, it's, uh, and I'll be going back to the Middle East because it, it is a time when American dollars and American uh, treasure, human treasure, are still being spent there. Uh, and the question is, are we doing it for the right reasons? Do we have the kind of adult leadership that uh, can guarantee uh, that these are not being lost uh, unnecessarily? And, and obviously, I have some questions. I had some questions under the last administration. But I have some even greater questions right now when that that famous call came at 3 o'clock in the morning and they got Hillary Clinton's answering machine. Uh, That's got to have worried people in the Middle East. And uh, I think that's the worst thing in the world is for them not to be able to count on America. If they can't count on America, they're going to do some really bad things. Daryl, tell me what you're working on right now because we're losing our connection with you and I don't want to do that. Uh, Tell me what you're up to right now. Well, right now, there's a. I'd like to say that we were dealing with just the money, but we're also dealing with a tremendous amount of, of wrong behavior. And one of them that has just emerged that's just sad is after Bernie Madoff ripped off so many Americans and so many charities, uh, the general counsel at the SEC, having reported to the chairwoman, Sheila Bear, that he had a conflict of interest, except he didn't think it was a conflict, The fact that 1.5 out of the $2 million that he pulled out of Bernie Madoff could be clawed back, he proceeded to try to gain influence to make it to where his own family would have to give back less of this money that they got from this Ponzi scheme. And we're looking and saying, and this is the person running the Security Exchange Commission, the entity that's supposed to make uh, all of us feel good about our public companies and the public trust. Tomorrow we have uh, 
we have the uh, the chairwoman in front of us, and we're going to try and get some answers. A little bit like probably, you know, somebody's wife says after 30 years, she said, you know, what were you thinking? Well, my question to the chairwoman is going to be, what were you thinking when somebody came and said, my family got $2 million in 2005 out of Bernie Madoff's uh, Ponzi scheme, but I'm okay helping decide what the clawback should be for uh, for people like myself without disclosing it. So that's that's a topical thing. But our committee, I have seven subcommittees. Each one of these fine chairmen is working on virtually one committee hearing a week, plus some major legislation. To, uh, tomorrow we're going to mark up the D.C. school voucher bill, which previous Mayors wanted desperately an opportunity, a scholarship for inner city kids in D.C. And the current mayor is saying, yeah, just give us the money, but we don't want to spend it on vouchers. We want to spend it on our union school teachers who already get over $14,000 per student per year and finish basically dead last among major uh, city schools. Well, Daryl, listen, <clears throat> I know we're out of time, but I look forward to working with you again. We need to go out and, and get in front of the people again. You know that? I, I look forward to doing a town hall meeting this summer. I think we'll do it just like we did it in August uh, at the school. And, and, and you have an opportunity to really have people come live. And as you saw, you know, there's always somebody who says you're dead wrong. And then there's the 4,000 people that say, hey, you're the only one saying that here. Have you questioned why you're saying it? <laughs> Daryl, you're a good guy. You know I believe oh, that. Thanks, uh, thanks. You know I believe that with all my heart and soul. You're doing the people's work. You listen to the will of the people. You're working on our behalf. You're not working against us. And uh, this summer, let's get out there and get four or five, six thousand people together and just have a good time. It's a deal. See you soon. It's a deal. Thanks, Thank you so much, Daryl Lice. Everybody, Congressman Daryl Lice.